I waited outside for a guy I met online to pick me up for a first date. Besides a sports car which slowed and drove off, nothing. 40 minutes later, I called him. Turns out that sports car was him and that I was too fat. The debut screening of my first film. The thong I was wearing was uncomfortable, so I threw it in the bathroom trash. I discovered later, under the bright lights, when I was looking at photos of myself, standing in front of 100 plus people, my dress was very see-through. <laughs> my first Christmas visiting my boyfriend's parents, I clogged the toilet. If there's ever a phrase you never want to whisper to your boyfriend's mother, it's, do you have a plunger? <laughs> Crap happens, literally. But I moved on. I didn't let crap moments turn into crap lifetime. My life is not perfect. My, my 401k is pathetic. I have stretch marks. I get irrationally irate when people misuse the reply all function in email. <laughs> but I'm ridiculously happy because I've decided to live a life of yes. A life of yes is one where you're comfortable yet challenged. You always have someone to do something with, even if that someone is yourself. You laugh a lot. You work really hard, but you never feel like you're working, and you're a magnet for goodness. This mindset has been such a source of positivity for me that I've built a business, Mac and Cheese Productions, out of helping others take steps to design their own life of yeses with the hope that they someday become ridiculously happy. Step one, identify your ingredients. I got fired from my last nine to five. No idea what I wanted to do, but knew I didn't want a boss and that I wanted to trade in the goal of work-life balance with the goal of living. I made a list of all the things, no matter how ridiculous they sounded, that I wished I could get paid to do. Eight years of self-employment bliss later, everything on that list is now a part of mac and cheese. Life has a way of falling into place when you tell it what you want. Lists are my way of telling. You may do it via blogging, vision boarding, meditating. The method you choose isn't important, it's the mindset. When I was single, I had a boyfriend criteria list. <laughs> a creative type with health insurance named Aiden, whose bed isn't in the corner of his room and who smells like campfire. Easy, right? Well, I now have a fiance who exceeds what I ever envisioned. What makes you talk excitedly with your hands? What can you always make time for? When do you feel your most happy and authentic self? Those are your life of yes ingredients. Step two, own your superpowers. We undervalue ourselves. You may not think that cooking without a recipe or being able to add fractions is a superpower, but for someone who can't do either, those make you a freaking rock star. <laughs> a foreign language you speak, an essay you wrote, a group you started, what you deem is no big deal may in fact be of great hope or inspiration for others. Step three, scratch your itch. I've missed that immediate bonding with complete strangers from all walks of life environment that we had so common in college and in summer camp. Why can't adults have capture the flag and guitar sing-alongs too? So, I rented six cabins in a 15-passenger van, spread the word I was having a life of yes retreat, and crossed my fingers. More applicants applied than I could accept. It was one of the most memorable experiences of my life, and from the feedback I got, seemingly the same for the participants. Life of Yes retreats are now one of Mac and Cheese's main offerings, with applicants from Wisconsin, Kansas, Ecuador. And three months after that nail-biting first retreat, the retreats were written up in Forbes. Step four, embrace your suckage. For one night, <laughs> I wanted to dance on stage like Mimi from Rent, but I suck at dancing. But I like to challenge myself. So I gathered 16 fellow bad dancers, who didn't know each other as a way to help friends make friends, hired a choreographer, rented a studio, and called it Dance Experiment. We rehearsed for three months and performed in front of a paying audience of 350. I crossed Dance Like Mimi off my life to-do list. Then I started getting inquiries about Dance Experiment 2. Dance Experiment 2? There is no Dance Experiment 2. But when the masses demand something, and that's how Fear Experiment was born. Today, Fear Experiment is two sold-out shows a year and another one of Mac and Cheese's happy accidents. Step five, act fearless. I often find myself thinking, 
I don't belong at this table because I don't have an MBA, I don't have a gold card, everyone else has skinnier thighs. Our common reaction is to go negative, but that helps no one ever. You have to let your brain allow positivity to speak louder than fear. I found out the Park West was available for fear experiment. The Park West, no. That's for celebrities. We can't fill 700 seats, and it's a gazillion dollars to rent. But life of yes, so I signed a contract, which made me responsible if we didn't sell tickets for lots of money I didn't have. Two hours before the show, the owner of the theater drove by, saw the line, and asked the director of sales, what celebrity is in town tonight that I didn't know about? And she said, uh, bad dancers and bad improvisers. <laughs> to death, but acting fearless. Step six, drink Why Not Kool-Aid. I became enamored with the idea of being a professional speaker. Never mind that I'm a sweaty, nervous rambler who shares stories about being stood up. I threw a Hire Me to Speak page on my website. And two days later, the organizer of a conference asked me to be a speaker. The roster included an MTV VJ, the inventor of the touchscreen, a Rhodes Scholar, a surgical roboticist, and me, why not? <laughs> What's the thing that you would do if you said, why not, instead of, I can't? Step seven, don't belong. For more challenge, I sought out a presentation opportunity, not in front of my normal crowd. Tech nerds who didn't necessar necessarily vibe with my life of yes energy. The whole time that I talked, they were all on their laptops, and I'm pretty sure they were not taking notes. I got to my boyfriend criteria, and one of them looked up, and he asked, so would you want him to smell like campfire all of the time or just some of the time? Turns out he was a chemical engineer and a few months later showed up at one of, one of my events with a vial of campfire cologne. <laughs> <laughs> when you get outside of that comfort zone, unexpected goodness. Step eight, do for others. I facilitate connections for strangers at events called minglers gatherings of people who are looking to expand their networks, social, professional, romantic. Everyone must come solo so that no one spends the evening talking to someone they already know. A guest came up to me and mentioned he had created a spreadsheet of all the barbecue restaurants in Chicago. If there's two things I love, it's barbecue and spreadsheets. <laughs> Good food and efficiency? I was intrigued. Three years, that mingler was three years ago and barbecue spreadsheet guy is now fiancé. <laughs> Using your superpowers to help others is uber satisfying, and more often than not, both sides benefit. Step nine, ask. How can someone know that you need help if you don't ask? We all need a hand at times in our lives. There's no shame in that. It's a flip side to do for others. The harmony between give and take. I refused to pay traditional wedding costs. So, of course, I made a list. What superpowers do I have that others would be willing to barter for? Social media prowess, event curation, a huge network of people who listen to my recommendations. And then I asked. And because I asked, these are some of the costs of, ooh, my Chicago wedding this far. The vendors had superpowers I wanted, and I had superpowers beneficial to them. Win-win. Step 10, Nike it. Stop waiting for the perfect time. It's never coming. Just do it. If I had waited to launch mac and cheese until I had a good logo, I would still be waiting. <laughs> Ask that barista out, apply for that job, take that trip. 
Nike the bejesus out of life. <laughs> Step 11, do for you. Take a guitar class because you want to learn to play guitar, not because you're hoping to be discovered. Go to a book reading because you enjoy the author, not to find your soulmate. In other words, be experience-focused, not results-focused. People act like nut jobs when they do something with a motive that isn't simply doing that thing. The scent of inauthenticity is as repellent as the scent of confidence is appealing. You are your most beautiful when you are living for yourself in the moment without any grand scheme or expectation. Step 12, know you're not alone. It always amazes me how many of you feel alone. How many of you feel that you're the only one Miserable at work, dateless in six years, doesn't like your own mother, has cockroaches, has debt, passes gas in yoga, wants more friends. <laughs> it's not just you. A New York Times article headlined, Why is it so hard to make friends over 30? Cites three conditions noted by sociologists as being crucial to creating authentic relationships. When you live a life of yes, you're doing all of these things. You're putting yourself out there to be around people, have new experiences, and make real connections. The author of that article mentions a New Yorker who was so lonely that he would take his cat for a walk in Central Park in search of conversation. Create a life of yes so that you don't have to resort to cat walking. <laughs> I promise, regardless of your toilet clogs or your stretch marks, if you live a life of yes, you'll find ridiculously happy. Thank you.